Okay. Are you seeing anything other than the agenda? Yeah, something that says Lenovo on it. Yeah, you're, I think it's definitely your oh, wallpaper. I, okay. I get it. You're seeing the whole, you see, it's yeah. impossible for me to know what you're actually seeing. So I'm glad that I didn't have like, I don't <laughs> I mean, I don't usually have anything to be. All good. Zoom life. Yeah, but you never know. I mean, it's not, it's not like I run the HR, the, uh, you know, NYCHA. Um, I promise <laughs> I won't, I won't do that. Uh, okay, so let me just see who we have here uh, before I call the meeting to order. Oh, it doesn't allow, weirdly, it does not allow me to look at the, there we go. Okay, so we've got, are you now seeing that my participant screen? No. Nope. All right. So I'm just looking to see if we have quorum. We've got Alexis, we've got Danny, we've got Sally, we've got me, we've got Nobles, we've got Etta, we've got Quorum. All right, so it's 6.34. I'm gonna call this meeting to order. Uh, just make a note. We got Nobles, Etta, Sally, Liz, Alexis. Uh, Barbara is excused. She's at a funeral. Um, so I'm going to call this meeting to order at 6.35. Welcome everybody to the Parks and Cultural Affairs Committee meeting for April. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining in. Um, just a, a housekeeping note, we are going to be uh, returning to in-person meetings. I just got something from the community board office earlier today. Um, it's effective, I think, June 8th. I mean, it was signed today and it's effective 60 days from today. So beginning June 8th, we are required to have an in-person component, but we may have a virtual component as well. Um, I don't totally understand the specifics of it or the mechanics of how exactly this will work, um, starting with our June committee meeting and the June general meeting. But for May, I suspect we will still be virtual. And um, just pay attention to your emails because there, there's going to be information about whether we're virtual, whether we're in person, whether we're hybrid, and what are the mechanics of that. And it's going to be pretty fluid. Uh, it's probably going to change a lot. So just pay attention to uh, your emails and to the notifications uh, with the agenda, which will have information about where the meeting is and how you go there or um, zoom in or what have you. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Last month's um, resolution regarding the pathways in Inwood Hill Park and Fort Tryon Park passed unanimously with 33 votes. So thank you to all of our colleagues on the board who uh, trusted the work of this committee and went with our recommendation to uh, approve the Parks Department's uh, proposed plan for that pathway work. Uh, I received an email, is it okay? Is everybody clear on the agenda? Um, oh, two, two notes on the agenda. I was hoping that incoming uh, Department of Cultural Affairs Commissioner Lori Cumbo would be able to zoom into the meeting and just talk a little bit about sort of vision for cultural affairs uh, and funding priorities in the city and um, whatever information about that. As you might imagine, it's a lot of work um, becoming a new commissioner. And even though it's pretty easy to drop into a meeting on Zoom. There's a lot going on. So she's not able to make it this evening. Um, 
the it's an open invitation. So since I think we will still be virtual next month, perhaps she will able she will be able to do that. So item number four on the agenda, we will not be uh, having. Also, I heard this morning from Fernando Ortiz uh, from New York City uh, EDC Economic Development Corp. He is still they're still having conversations with uh, the local council member around the ERPAC, so they're not ready to have a public um, discussion about that yet. So he has to be put on the May agenda, and he apologized for the last minute change. He also indicated that he would be uh, wanting to make a presentation about uh, waterfront development as well. So we will have that on tap for May. Uh, so that means our agenda this evening is going to be brief programming updates from uh, nonprofits, cultural uh, friends of parks groups. Um, we'll have Jennifer Hoppe's uh, parks report on any updates, uh, programming updates, and capital updates. We'll talk a little bit with uh, Nicole O'Brien and hear from her about the pandering pig uh, or the Bonifant, uh, which is the new concession in um, Fort Triant, the Fort Triant Park restaurant. And then we'll have a conversation with um, Curtis Suniga from the Lenape Center, uh, sort of a continuation of the conversation that we started many months ago around uh, possible renamings of uh, Bennett Park and uh, of other areas in parks to honor that we are all on Lenape land. So with that, I would like to kill the screen share so that people are able to see each other. Sound good? Go for it. Excellent. I just never want to be accused of having a hidden agenda. <laughs> Sorry, that joke never gets old. <laughs> I'm just, I'm such a child. Um, I did get an email from um, City Parks Foundation about It's My Parks Day and funding for It's My Parks Day deadlines if you are running a Friends of Parks group, deadlines for um, uh, grant applications for programming for It's My Parks Day is this Friday. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I can forward you that email. And I think that is it for my announcements. Uh, so let's move to brief programming updates. And we're gonna do that by show of hands. Hey, Paola, would you mind sending me the uh, the agenda for this meeting, please? I don't think I received it for some reason. Oh, it should be attached to the to your, your meeting invite. It wasn't, which is why I'm asking. Uh, yeah, if you just forward it to me, that'd be great. I just want to copy paste some stuff. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, first up, we have Julie McCoy. Let me just set my uh, timer, and I am going to... All right, what you got? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. I've not done a Zoom webinar. Um, yep, I'll we can hear you. Great, thank you. So some of you may remember me from meetings uh, before COVID when I was secretary at the Inwood Canoe Club. Um, I'm basically the lead instructor at the club and I've been working with Steve Harris and the rest of the board um, and some of our other members to put together our summer programming. Um, and actually, I should say not just summer programming, because as the COVID situation has evolved, we've continued to evolve our program. So uh, there's really kind of three main things. Uh, one is that we're trying to do more that's not necessarily on water activity. Uh, in particular, that means that we've been able to already have two uh, programs this spring where we allowed the public to come to the boathouse. Um, we had one, a shoreline cleanup day uh, that was... I think it was near the end of March or early May. Uh, it was a day where it was below freezing, literally, and rather windy, but we had pretty good turnout and a number of people happy to just pick up garbage up on, off the shoreline. Um, so that was a success. And then on Saturday, this past Saturday, uh, we simply had uh, an open invitation to come visit the boathouse. We pulled down various boats of ours and just sort of had a uh, meet and greet and learn about boats and learn about the boathouse and about the Hudson River. And that was a su success as well. So we'd like to do more of those events. 
Um, <clears throat> the open house program, we're gonna continue with some of our, uh, the adaptations that we made last year, um, which mainly revolve around having, uh, we're, we're, we're still debating whether to have walk-ups versus sign-ups, but we're going to small groups where we can have a, a smaller um, number of groups. And the goal is, is basically to say, uh, two waves of 12, um, well, three waves of 12, it may be two groups of six at a time going out and coming back. Was that my time? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's your 15 second warning. Okay, thank you. Well, so we're basically gonna try and do more people uh, this year than we did last year while still being mindful, following the guidance we get from parks as far as COVID. The last thing uh, I wanna mention is that uh, we are gonna have some of our instructors. So I'm one of four people qualified to instruct paddle sport. We are going to have free sign up classes. Um, we're still working out the dates, but it will probably be Saturdays. Um, these will be more like two to three hour sessions for people to sign up and have a dedicated session learning how to paddle. And they can come from multiple and get better, or they can just come and you know, have a more uh, extended period than usual. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And um, just a note to you and to all of the other speakers as well, if you can email me and uh, Nobles, just a quick summary of your comments. It makes it much easier for the minute taking for us to do. We'll, we'll do, and, and Liz, you, you may see these from Francis Hall. Oh yes, you know what? I did get Francis's email. So I will forward that to you, uh, Nobles, to uh, edit. Mm -hmm. um, super, thanks. Next up, we've got Shiloh Holly, And I just wanna let people know that what I'm doing is I'm giving you uh, everybody has two two minutes. I'm giving you a minute thirty, and when you hear the buzzer, that's your actually your thirty second um, uh, warning. Being uh, generous tonight. <laughs> yeah, you know we don't. Have to. Okay, Shiloh. Hi. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I wanted to announce that we are opening a new exhibition this month: Imaginations Arts. Art as Solidarity by neighborhood artist Andrea Arroyo. Uh, that is actually going to be a, a uh, exhibition that's going to be on view in three different places in Uptown this spring and summer. At the mansion, it'll be on view until June 12th, and we have free entry, which you can book directly at our website. And as a part of that, we have a special teacher workshop with Andrea, Social Justice Art Making, which is on April 30th from 9.30 a.m. to 11.30 it's $10 per teacher. Again, additional information is on our website. Uh, we're also partaking in the Harlem Cultural Crawl, which is the weekend of April 23rd and 4th. Uh, and then the mansion will be open for free tours during that weekend. Uh, the following weekend, or two weekends from that, we are participating in Jane's Walk and we'll be hosting a free architectural walking tour uh, of the Jamel Terrace Historic District and neighboring um, area with uh, John Reddick. And uh, our next family day is on May 14th, and we're doing a workshop sketching from nature in the park. Um, all of this is, all other details are found on our website, morrisjamal.org. And I also wanted to add that we have a plethora of N95 masks, which we're, we're making available for community groups if they want them, uh, thanks to a donation from New York Presbyterian Hospital. So if you're interested, we have boxes and cases available. You can just email info, I-N-F-O, at Morris, Jamel, M-O-R-R-I-S, J-U-M-E-L, dot org, if you're interested in any of those masks. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you. All right, next up we have Ian Kaddick from Row, New York. Hello, uh, hi everyone. Uh, just a brief update on New York, of uh, Row, New York. The removal of our Peter J. Sharp boathouse on the Harlem River is now due to take place during the first two weeks of May. Uh, it has been pushed back from April. Um, also, I wanted to note that we are now enrolling eighth graders to learn to row this spring and also uh, for summer programming. Uh, if anyone needs further information, they can reach out to us at info at rownewyork.org. Um, exact uh, dates and times of the summer program are still being determined, uh, but we hope to have uh, 
to have everything solidified in the next few days. So uh, we can update you on that uh, next month. Fantastic. Thank you. You, you get the prize for being the most succinct. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next up, we've got, hi, Mary. Next up, we've got Sally Fisher. Uh, I take it you're representing uh, Friends of Inwood Hill Park and um, uh, Park the Park Hike and Food Council. Yep. No, just um, a note which is repeating in the minutes from the last couple of months. Um, April 22nd is Earth Day. We'll have a poetry walk that night. The next day, we'll have a cleanup event. We'll have a flogging run with New York Roadrunners, the regular Saturday run. And we'll have our sustainability zone with, with a bunch of upcycling activities, recycling activities, and games for kids. On May 7th, we have the 11th annual River Sweep Cleanup. We'd love to have people from the Canoe Club join us, Julie, if you guys are around. And then on um, June 4th, details still to be worked out, we'll be celebrating National Trails Day. As you know, Inwood Hill Park's Orange Trail is to receive that designation this year. And that's it. What's the date on the Trails Day, the 4th? June 4th. Yeah, it's always the first Saturday in May. A lot of these things, in fact, Earth Day is always the same day. Mm -hmm. um, the River Sweep is always the first Saturday in May, and National Trail Day is always the first Saturday in June. So Got it's it. planning for the future fairly easily. Okay. Thank you very much. Hey, Chair, may, may I ask something really quickly of the folks yeah. that are presenting? Yeah. Hey, folks, when you send Liz and I uh, your, your write-up, if you could, then this is just like a, a courtesy ask, uh, could you please put it in paragraph format versus bullets? Copy-pasting bullets and or editing bullets, wordsmithing, it's just too much. So if you could put it like into a paragraph format and send that to us, that would be fantastic for both of us. Thank you. Are you nervous? Anything. Uh, Sally, you are my number one supporter. You know I love you. Energy to you. Thank you. I thought I was your number one supporter. 1.5? <laughs> I don't know. I've always had, you know, seven favorite siblings. So. Uh, there we go. Fit me in as number eight. I'm good with that. <laughs> I love that. It's hard to tell you apart, though, because you look alike. Um, <laughs> Mothers from another mother. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I did hear from Martin Collins. He is um, not refing, uh, announcing a game. So he's not able to make his years. presentation, but he asked me to share the following information on behalf of NOMA. The Women in the Heights gallery hours uh, are extended to Saturday, May 14th. Uh, see the exhibition featuring 39 Upper Manhattan artists from uh, 1 to 5 p.m. Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at 4140 Broadway. That's the United Palace. Artists may calendar their arts and cultural events for publication by NOMA, including events, exhibitions, and open studios during the 20th Uptown Art Stroll in June online at um, uh, www.nomanyc.org slash submit hyphen event. And if you go to the NOMA website, that information is there. The stroll opens Wednesday, June 1st from 6 to 8.30 at the Harlem School of the Arts on St. Nicholas Avenue. Uh, studios will be Saturday and Sunday, June 4th and 5th and June 11th and 12th from West 135th to 220th Street. They might be in person, they might be virtual, they might be both. The closing is Thursday, June 30th from 6 to 8.30 at the United Palace. The poster contest winner and this year's honorees will be announced soon. You can stay up to date on the stroll at www.artstroll.com. Uh, NOMA is also having three technical assistance workshops for artists and arts organizations at Broadway Housing Communities, 898 St. Nicholas Avenue. The free workshops start at 6.30 p.m. They are on Wednesday, April 6th, Wednesday, April 13th, and Wednesday, May 4th. You must RSVP, and the information on all of that and RSVPing is, um, again, available on their website. It's an Eventbrite, but there's a link on their website. And Nobles, I will forward this to you. <laughs> Thank you. So you can just drop that in. Beep. And 
And is there anybody else who has, well, you always, you always go last because then you segue into, into your capital report and your programming report. So uh, see, oh, I see one more hand. Oh, from the Hispanic Society. So glad you came in. Um, very excited to hear what you have to say about your upcoming exhibitions. Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome back from Spain. Liz, thank you for the postcard. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I just, I have to tell everybody, sorry, I, I promise this won't eat into your time. I was in, among other places, Madrid, and I was able to visit the mothership. I got to go to the Soroya Museum. Uh -huh. That was absolutely a highlight cool. of my trip, seeing all of those Soroyas. Uh, and I bet Alex is going to tell us when the Soroya Gallery will be opening so that I can see all of my friends again. Okay, I guess I'll add that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, I just want to go over the activities upcoming for the month of April very quickly. This Saturday, April 16th from 2 to 4 p.m., we are doing uh, the exhibition, our current exhibition, Nostra Casa, Rediscovering Treasures in Spanish Society closes on Sunday the 17th. So on Saturday the 16th, we're doing a family slash community day from 2 to 5 p.m. And we're going to have a, um, I'm going to just, um, Azules y Son Jarocho. Basically, we're having a music presentation of Jarocho, which is a Mexican like folk music. And we're going to have ceramic tile making. Uh, so families of different intergeneration, you'll learn how to make paint on ceramic tiles while you listen to um, um, music. Uh, the second event we have is Saturday, April 23rd, the following weekend from 2 to 5 p.m. We're going to have a spring open house featuring the installation of Art and Solidarity by Andrea Arroyo. We're going to have banners and posters of her, uh, her graphic design artworks that deal with issues of social issues of, of human rights, of uh, immigration, women's rights and so forth. So we different banners, very, very graphic images, uh, really bold, so we're wonderful to have those. And we're gonna also have during that day, a performance by, uh, Latin jazz performance by Annette Aguilar and the String Beans. And that's gonna be at three o'clock, that's on the 20th. So, so we have something this Saturday at 16 from two to four and something next Saturday, the 23rd from three to the, two to five. So come to both. Um, and then in the end of April at the Academy, our letters, we are having two concerts. Our concert series this year, it's on flamenco. And we're going to have two. We had the first one in March that was uh, done virtually, but the next two are live in person at the Arts, uh, at the Academy of American Academy of Arts and Letters. It's Thursday, the 28th, and Friday, the 29th of April. The, uh, they're both going to be um, uh, uh, La Gitana. It's the one on the 28th. And El, Span El Spanish Dance, I don't know if that's funny, El Spanish Dance is on the 28th. Um, I mean, on the 29th. So I'll send this to you, Noble, uh, and uh, uh, we will have that going on. And then in summer, we're going to have an exhibition on watercolors, American travelers in Spain, Portugal, and Mexico. And that opens mid-June, and that's going to run into October 16th. And as and while we're doing work on the Soroya Gallery to create a new HVAC system, so we hopefully will get that done throughout this fall, summer, late fall, summer, fall, late summer and fall, so we could open it up in January. So that's the that's our goal. Fantastic. It's not just a ventilation system for the main court or the HVAC system for Soroya. It's also dealing with some issues of ADA accessibility from the terrace to the other terrace up to the steps of the museum. So we are trying to, with Landmarks, work that out with a temporary lift. Um, so a $3 million project. We got a million dollars so far from a private donor. Any donations? Please send them our way. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. Thank you very much. I look forward to the Soroya Galleries being reopened, and it sounds like there's an awful lot going on. And just um, for anybody who hasn't seen the exhibition uh, that is closing very soon, you should go because it's fabulous. Um, okay, next up we have Jennifer Hoppe. Sorry, trying to unmute. <laughs> Hi, Hello. welcome back from Spain. I'm quite jealous. Puede ser esta, este verano puedo ir a España también. 
fue magnífico. Um, so lots going on in our parks of town. Um, just some quick highlights at Highbridge Park. Not everybody has gotten to go up into the Highbridge Water Tower. Um, the next time to do so is April 16th at 1 p.m. with the Urban Park Rangers. Um, enter the park at 174th and Amsterdam Avenue. Um, with the upcoming school break, um, we've got with the Urban Park Rangers Kids Week um, on Monday, April 18th from one to two, uh, we've got Geology Rocks. Um, and that's meeting at, at Seaman Avenue and Isham entrance to Inwood Hill Park. Um, and then they're having another program during Kids Week, an Earth Day celebration hike, Friday, April 22nd from one to two. Um, and that one starts at Dykeman Street um, at the Payson Playground. Um, also, everybody should be, and, and Sally will probably chime in, Everybody should be participating in the City Nature Challenge. Um, if you don't want to do it on your own, you can join the Urban Park Rangers um, Saturday, April 30th for a biodiversity hike. And they're going to help us observe and collect data for the City Nature Challenge. Um, that's a fr the friendly competition that's taking place April 29th to May 1st. Um, hopping over to Fort Tryon, don't forget. Um, we've got Forest Fitness Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7.30 a.m. Meet at the Heather Garden entrance. Um, Saturdays you meet at 8.30 a.m. Um, and uh, getting your hands digging in the dirt. We've got several projects happening in Inwood with groups already, but we've got walk-in programs at Fort Tryon. Um, Saturday the 23rd for Earth Day, you can join the Broadway Berm Beautification Project doing invasive removal, weeding, and site preparation for spring, 10 a.m. at Broadway and Arden Street. Or Sunday, uh, you can do our Sunday stewardship project at Fort Tryon, um, 10 a.m. meet at the Heather Garden entrance. And that project is going to involve the Fort Washington Subway Terrace area. Um, we've been improving the ecology down there, having some uh, programming, hope to have some Zumba down there. And then we're going to be piloting a Israeli handball court down there. Um, so Gaga, um, which is at a lot of camps and um, day camps and boy, boy and girls scout camps and uh, properties. So you can help us get ready for that uh, Sunday, April 24th. And last but not least, the Urban Wildlife Festival is back. We are so excited. Mm -hmm. uh, the Fort Tryon Park Trust and the Urban Park Rangers are putting it on this year at Highbridge Park at 172nd Street in Amsterdam, May 14th from noon to three. You can, in past years, we've had um, skunks that don't, can no longer spray you, eagles, hawks, owls, um, lots of live animals for not just children, but for adults to get up and uh, close and personal with. And um, there's a live band um and a puppet show and a lot of fun games and it's a great way to experience uh Highbridge Park more event information can be found on um nyc.gov parks and you can search by park if you want or on fortriumparktrust.org slash events um just a couple of quick announcements um yes we have coyotes uptown most people who are on the committee know this, but anybody who's in the audience uh, who might be new to the community board arena, um, the Parks Department has a pair of coyotes that are denning in Inwood Hill Park, and uh, they periodically go into Fort Tryon Park. Um, new York City Parks' Wildlife Division is working with the Coyote Project on monitoring the developments and the activities of the coyote population uptown. Um, they're not generally dangerous, uh, as long as you keep your distance, don't feed them. Don't try to habituate, you know, get them habituated to humans. They do their thing. You do yours. Um, and like I said, uh, the wildlife division recommends staying at least 150 feet away and you're going to want to keep your dogs on a leash. Um, you can help us monitor the coyote activity by calling in any sightings uh, to 311, or you can shoot me an email and I'll forward it immediately to the rangers. I'm jennifer.hapa at parks.nyc.gov. And uh, 
we're coming back to that time. COVID testing bans are coming back to parks in the near term. Um, many of you recall that we had a testing at Highbridge Park at 180th in Amsterdam. That's coming back. And then I believe the second location is either at J. Hood Wright or Bennett, Bennett Park, excuse me. Um, also, um, capital projects, I'm just going to do top and then if there are questions, I'll answer those. This committee approved the pathway work for Inwood Hill and Fort Tryon. Time frame for that looks like they're starting work in Inwood in June. And Sally, do not fret. Uh, contractors being directed to ensure that the Orange Trail is intact for our, our uh, designation as a federal part of the Federal Recreation uh, Trails Program by the Department of Interior. Um, and Thank Fort Tryon is going to start in July. This Monday, however, the $14 million reconstruction project for the Monsignor Kett Playground and Comfort Station is going to begin construction. Um, for anybody new to these meetings, uh, the Parks yes. Department got great input from this committee and members of the public in our public scoping meeting. Um, and that design received an award from the city's public design commission, uh, which is pretty neat. Um, so that will be, that playground will not be available um, for, for about a year and the comfort station project is estimated to be about 18 months. Um, and last but not least, the Bennett Avenue rock face is supposed to be going into construction in May. Um, since there are the Jersey barricades there now, we don't expect there to be any more sort of interruptions. I think the contractor is going to use that as their perimeter. So no expected additional loss of parking or anything like that. But just so people are aware, that rock face work with the post being driven into it uh, is going to advance. Will it be loud? Probably, I would expect so. And just so people are aware, we have 40 capital projects in Northern Manhattan parks. Well, wait, right hold on, before you go with those, is it possible for parks to maybe do a little bit of signage around there to just give uh, the neighbors a little bit of a heads up, maybe, uh, I, I don't know how much of an interagency thing it is if you can talk to the MTA about posting some signage around there. Um, and possibly, I don't know how you would get the word out to that housing complex that's directly across the street. I'll just Manhattan. write their board. That works. Um, the contractor is required to put up signage. Okay. Not notifying people about what, you know, the project and where to call if there's an issue, that type okay. of thing. And once the project is done, those Jersey barricades are coming out. down. And in theory, I, I mean, I would say the parking will return, but I think the parking on that part of the street, because of the way it's curved, it was no parking anyway, but the postal service trucks parked there. So it's, I mean, it was in theory a loss, but not really. So it's not really gonna be a gain when we get that space back, yes? I think no? the gain will be visibility for drivers and pedestrians will be improved if you don't have all mm -hmm. those postal trucks on the- Yes. Uh, what is that? The east side of the street anymore. But, so that's that's the goal. But we do have a lot of capital projects that are in various stages. If you go on the Parks Department's website mm -hmm. and can just do Parks Capital Project Tracker, um, you can get updates on all of them. Um, and I'm just trying to think what else. The Pathways, Monsignor Ket. We'll have more updates in May. Okay. But as most people know, the mayor announced that a lot of the capital projects that had been put on hold because of COVID have been released. So hundred projects that got stopped or advancing uh, and many of those are parks projects. So there's gonna be a lot of activity. Fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Okay. I do have a question, if that's okay at this yeah, point. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, hey, Jennifer, uh, thank you also for all that you do. Thank you. Um, Javits Park tonight, there were doors locked. Do you know why? That's this, the either somebody who doesn't usually lock up was assigned lock up tonight. Somebody oh, okay. called out sick. They're not, it's not supposed to be closing that early. I already wrote some oh, okay, cool. of the Just picture. To make sure. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, cool. can send, I can send this committee the actual hours. No worries. And, uh, 
It's about the third time it's happened, I know. Um, okay, so- yeah, because we thought it was a trend. And so we we're like, oh my God, don't take our park from, <laughs> you know how it is, you know. No. So, it's, okay, it's, cool, it's, it's good, good to know. The hours have changed, obviously, because daylight savings. Daylight savings, so- right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Um, okay. Okay. Cool. Too, it was locked too early. My apologies. All good. It's all good. Thank you. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. All right. So with that, we're going to move on to uh, since, as I noted, uh, items four and five are being deferred to May. We're going to move on to item six. Uh, we're going to hear from Nicole O'Brien of the Pandering Pig and the Bonifant. I just want to uh, give a little bit of background for anybody who, oh, wait, we got a question in the Q&A. Oh, sorry, before we move to this, um, I overlooked Cassandra um, Collazo from the Girl Scouts. Uh, Cassandra, do you want to just give your announcements about what's going on with the Girl Scouts and what's happening? With your oh sure. Um, well, I just put that Girl Scout troop leader just so people would know who I <laughs> who I am. Right. But um. But just just I, to be clear, I know who you are, and the <laughs> only people who can read the Q and A are the panelists, which is why I wanted to put you, you know, take you off of mute so that you can uh, give your announcement. Great, thank you. Yep. Um, I don't know if everyone remembers, but I was facilitating um, outdoor story time for infants and toddlers at the Ring Garden. Um, in the fall at 11 a.m. We had to stop because um, it just got too cold, but it's all coming back starting um, this Thursday at 11 a.m. Um, I'll be facilitating along with Maddie Arnstein. Um, so if anyone knows of anyone who has a baby or a toddler, you know, please come down and see us. And again, that's every Thursday at 11 a.m. weather permitting. Fantastic. And just remind me, what is your Girl Scout troop number? I always forget that. Oh, 3205. Thank you. Uh, excellent. All right. So back to uh, agenda items. And Nobles, that, that item should actually get tacked on as the last. Already um, did. For, yep. you, are, you are the best. When and I do what I do. That's, and you do it so well. <laughs> so for those who are not familiar, we've got um, in Fort Tryon Park, we have a restaurant concession. It used to be the, um, the New Leaf Cafe. Um, New Leaf closed, Uh, there was a a competitive bid, there was an RFP process um, broadly distributed throughout the community and um, the successful bidder, this this is a long thing and you don't have to put this in the minutes, I'm just bringing people up to speed because this has been recorded in previous minutes. Uh, I'm just doing a summary. Okay, the successful bidder uh, wound up, those negotiations broke down. Um, it went to the next person and that broke down. And if, so the parks department decided to uh, reissue the RFP and then this thing called COVID happened. So it just, it all took a very, very long time. Uh, somewhere in there, in addition to COVID, there was a crazy guy in the White House who uh, was partly responsible for an insurrection against our government. So the Parks Department thought it would be a good idea to cancel all of his contracts uh, for uh, for his golf courses. So there was a lot going on in the Revenue Department, which is yet another reason why this all took so long. Anyway, finally, um, an award was was made uh, and that was given to uh, 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 consortium of uh, neighborhood people, including uh, Nicole O'Brien and the Pandering Pig. And she's gonna talk to us a little bit about what uh, their plans are for that concession. And uh, then we'll take some questions. Uh, But before we do that, I just wanna let people know that if I if I'm understanding this correctly, you still have, you don't have like the ink isn't dry yet on the on the uh, contract from the comptroller's office this being a large city government that is responsible to taxpayers. It's a fairly lengthy uh, bureaucratic process, which on the one hand is a bit of a drag. On the other hand, that's how we know that the right things are happening with our tax dollars. Um, I think we have someone from revenue, the yes. New York City Parks Department's revenue division here 
Great. to answer any process questions. Fantastic. And what I do understand from, uh, from revenue is once the um, contract is signed, then we will be able to uh, have some more information on um, how many other uh, how many how many applicants there were and such like that. So I know people have a lot of those questions, which won't be able to be answered yet. But before we get to the Q and A, let's hear from Nicole. Hi, am I on? I I you hope are. I'm on. We can hear you. Okay, great. <laughs> so uh, hello, I am Nicole O'Brien, and for those of you who don't know me, I have operated the Pandering Pig restaurant here on Pinehurst and 187 for almost seven years. Um, and so uh, I've been a, also a community member for going on 20 years. Um, we moved here in 2003. Um, so I am very familiar with the neighborhood and the park. Um, when the concession came about, uh, the RFP, I was very excited to um, submit myself and my, um, my company to it and uh, was so excited to have won it. So um, I, we have a multi-tiered um, offering um, which was accepted by the parks, which is to not only bring a very beautiful high quality restaurant um, but a, also a community-driven um, experience here. Um, my three children have gone to the local school here, 187. Two of them are still there in eighth grade, twins. And um, we, we have a um, grow sort of a, the, 187 is also doing it, it kind of preempted us. They're, um, they have a organic um, vegetable garden um, and that was our uh, one of our community outreach aspects of our uh, proposal was to grow um, herbs, vegetables, invite the community in to to learn how to grow, to to take part in in um, receiving the bounty of growing, uh, learn how to grow, learn how to eat, learn how to um, to to eat healthily. Um, the other aspect of that in the front of house of the restaurant, we would like to invite um, high schoolers from all around the community to learn how to become, um, you know, a part of the restaurant industry that's above and beyond just being, you know, a waiter, busser, dishwasher. We want them to learn how to be management, how to, to be a, you know, front of house managerial position. Um, I think that would enrich a lot of um, kids coming out of high school that don't quite know what they're doing or where they fit in. Um, this is an industry, you know, where you, you can go to college to get a, a hospitality degree, but you don't have to. So um, we have, we're very committed to that community outreach aspect. Um, my cuisine is very, uh, Kind of a hybrid. I grew up in Northern California. I bring in a lot of what I grew up um, in the 80s, <laughs> 90s doing, which is local organic um, before it became a thing. Um, so I, I do that here at my current restaurant, The Pandering Pig, and will continue to do that at the Bonfont. Um, and I, I, my other element is French cuisine. So when I um, when we proposed to the parks, I, I thought a lot about the name and bringing in all of the aspects of of what I know about the parks, the cloisters, having lived here for almost twenty years, and that's how I chose my name. The Bonfont is a uh, cloister that is from the southwest region of France, and a lot of what I do is is from that cuisine. And um, the Bonfant Cloister also happens to be the cloister where they do um, the educational outreach to um, medicinal herbs. So I, I thought it was a perfect name to tie us all together. 
Um, we really look forward to being a, a member of the community and, you know, the parks and just kind of tie everything together. So that's our, that's our plan and we're very excited to get it going. We're excited to have you. Um, and, and Alexander Hahn, um, who's the director of concessions for New York City Parks Department is on if the committee has specific questions about process um, and schedule, those types of things. I think, yeah, I'm um, just wondering if you can walk us through a little bit of, uh, if you could do a better job than, than I did in explaining a little bit about the process. Um, I know you and I have spoken and I sure. have uh, the, the benefit of uh, understanding that a little bit more and I'm never really sure how well I've communicated that to people. So if you can just give us whatever information you can, understanding that some of the information is not publicly available yet. Sure. Um, Liz, do you want me to start from the from the initial issuance of the RFP or do you want to just an update on where things stand going forward? If you could just give a, to the extent that you can, a little bit of information about how you uh, network with the community to spread the word. If you can talk about, if you can say how many applications you received or you know the extent to which it's representative of the community and then what the timeline is going forward. Sure. Um, so, you know, the, the issuance of the RFP, you know, the outreach that we do um, we're required to notify, you know, uh, local uh, uh, businesses citywide as well. Um, so we've worked, uh, you know, I think pretty diligently above and beyond what's required by the concession rules um, to reach out to the uh, all impacted local um, uh, electeds, um, business improvement districts, local businesses. Um, we, you know, got in touch with them um, through a pandemic, which was you know, very challenging on the communications end, but but we have a pretty extensive list of folks who we've reached out to in the community, uh, in addition to the civic groups and the electeds. Um, we worked with our marketing division um, to to do an online campaign um, specifically for this RFP and, and uh, to try to um, get, you know, a, as much of the advertising in front of the eyes of local businesses as possible, um, you know, assuming, you know, to the, extent, to the greatest extent that was possible through the, the contract that we had had. Um, we worked with the um, Department of Small Business Services who amplified our outreach um, and same goes for the New York City Economic Development Corporation. Um, so we really uh, tried our best um, to make sure that everyone knew about this RFP who was interested in it. Um, and then um, as Nicole had mentioned, we, we conducted a, you know, interviews and, and um, her and her group were uh, one of the folks we had uh, selected for for an interview and requested best and final offers uh, and ultimately um, uh, her proposal was selected a, as the highest rated um, we negotiated an agreement with her um, i would have to get back to you liz on the total number of responses that were received okay. um, i don't know that offhand I, I apologize i didn't i didn't come to this meeting with that okay. um, you know from from here on out uh, we've you know we've already had the public hearing in in march of uh you know last month um and the agreement has in fact been signed by both parks um and nicole's team um the next step is to register the agreement with the new york city controller's office um and then after an agreement is registered with the controller then it is um uh, considered in effect and, and a valid uh, new york city concession agreement um, so the agreement calls for a design and a construction component. Um, it's a phase that needs to take place before the restaurant uh, can reopen. Um, we're, we've been working in good faith with Nicole and her designers to, um, as they work on a plan for us to review. So, you know, there's no designs that have been approved or reviewed officially by parks or any other agencies. Um, so that is still um, yet to come. Um, but once the design approval process is done and, and the, uh, the necessary permits from DOB are in hand, um, Nicole and her team have up to uh, nine months to do construction um, and then reopen the facility. So that's the plan for now. Um, we, we don't, again, we don't have designs that are approved um, or, or that are ready for review yet, but I would anticipate that once we do, um, 
the, the process for design review will also include the community board. So if they have up to nine months and there's somewhat of a process of that being approved, it sounds like this isn't going to open for a year. I, you know, I think I, I would want to be conservative because I, I you know, I, we're not really in the business of, of uh, over promising, you know. Um, so, you know, I think I would anticipate spring, um, you know, late spring of 2020 three, if not earlier than that. Um, you know, I think e even getting construction completed this year, I think, you know, Nicole mm -hmm. and her team and, and Parks will all have to consider whether, you know, that would be the best time to open if it's going to be in the dead of winter when there's not, you know, as many people that would go out to a restaurant. But opening um, up in January, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they all said. Right. right. <laughs> I see. But of course, that's something that we'd all work on. And, you know, if if everything works out and, and, and Nicole's open, uh, you know, able to open earlier and she can open this year. Um, obviously, we're not we're not going to stand in the way of that. Um, but we, we definitely don't want to promise uh, something, you know, to, to be completed this year, um, knowing that we still have a design approval process and then um, there needs to be work done. And then, you know, anytime you put shovels in the ground, any plan and schedule you, you may have may completely be out of whack based on what you find. Okay, so to be clear, the takeaway here is that it would open no late, most likely no later than spring of 23. And depending on any number of factors, it, it could be earlier, but it's it wouldn't be later. By the way, I see what you did there with your background. Uh, <laughs> for those of you paying attention at home, that's the new, that's the, the former new leaf soon to be Bonifant uh, Cafe. Um, Thanks, Liz. So I see that we have a question from Sally. I have other questions, but I want to. Sure, two questions. One is, um, you mentioned it was a consultant bid on this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A lot of background noise. What's going on? Um, you mentioned it was a consortium to bid on. Sorry, Sally. Did you hear my questions or should I repeat them? Please repeat. Okay, one is you mentioned a consortium was um, bidding on this, the winning consortium, and I wondered who the other partners were. And second, you mentioned a community garden would be part of the design, and I, if you could talk a little bit more about that. Sure, um, so I am, um, the Bonfont LLC is a company I do have investors, um, many of which are community members in this neighborhood. Um, the community garden, um, we're working within the framework of the boundaries of the concession. So um, it's slightly, slightly into the grass area, it sort of halts right at the grass area and we're working to uh, do vertical gardening within um, the patio space and around what, what we are allowed to have. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff going on right now with vertical gardening and interior gardening. So I'm, I'm very excited to pursue that. Um, but in uh, no means are we in, in, in um, encroaching upon the park space. Cool, thank you. Thanks, and I would just offer that the Washington Heights Inwood Food Council would be happy to work with you on the vertical garden. Yes, we're very excited to explore all opportunities. Um, one of our partners um, uh, mentioned to me that he knows of a high school in the city where they do the vertical gardening within the cafeteria and part of the one of the classes in the school is for the children to harvest um the the bounty um and serve it in the cafeteria so that's exactly the kind of thing that we're looking for um, we've already reached out to the principal of 187 and she's so so excited to partner with us in that respect great um, related to that, would you, can you also reach out to the, do you have connections with uh, 218, which is yeah. 
sort of it's it's as close but in the other direction it's east as opposed to south absolutely i mean i um i keep mentioning 187 because i'm a parent of the of my children who go there but i'm on one of my main objectives and goals is to kind of broach the west of broadway east of broadway dynamic and i'm really looking um to bring in um really members of all the community not just kids from um uh, you know who might feel that they are food insecure um to learn and um experience growing and learn how to to, to eat well and how to sustain um that's one of our our biggest uh goals that sounds really exciting um, I was wondering, can you talk a little bit about the menu offerings and if, I mean, not, not at the granular level, but <laughs> in addition to being sort of a, an, an elegant fine dining experience, will there also be um, more budget-friendly options, takeaway, muffins, picnic lunches, things like that, that people can then consume in the park, because that's yeah, absolutely no, that's one this. of our one of our most exciting elements is to have our breakfast cart, which will be open from 8am to um, about noon, um, where you can buy muffins, organic coffee, teas, uh, little sandwiches, breakfast sandwiches, welcome to sit on the patio or at the adjoining lawn or wherever you'd like in the park and enjoy those things. Um, we are going to have lunch specials where we've already reached out to the Met to partner with them, um, with groups that come to the Met and would like to have a, a really wonderful experience with, you know, a culinary experience in the park. Um, so, you know, very budget friendly lunch specials um and as well as you know dinner we want to have um people to feel welcome from all all aspects of the community um i made this menu <laughs> for the submission about two years ago when we started this process and then i i submitted an amended one in february um which reflects you know some some more uh options and pricing for all members of the community. Um, but I'd certainly, you know, having had a restaurant here in the community for seven years, I'm very aware of um, how people, uh, you know, we we uh, are considered a fine dining. Um, my, my restaurant, the Pandering Pig is considered fine dining, um, but we do a midweek menu that is very fair and very um, economically open to everyone. Um, I, I kind of learned that along the way. I, I don't want to repeat that at the Bonfant. I want to make it um, accessible all days of the week to everybody. I, I don't want to get um, a reputation that we are exclusive or, you know, um, not uh, inviting to, to many members of the community. So I'm very, very aware of that and will be offering many options to everybody. Fantastic. Um, I love that. And, um, you know, we welcome you to come back. Obviously, you can't answer all of the questions because who knows what things are gonna look like once you finally get opened. But uh, we welcome you to, uh, to drop in. Um, we're hoping that we get better at the technology of offering um, hybrid. <clears throat> meetings, but you know, you're in the community. So even when we do go back to meeting down at uh, 166th Street, not that far, uh, we certainly don't have the expectation that everybody is going to come to every meeting. But you know, great if you can periodically drop into uh, um, the Parks and Cultural Affairs Committee meetings, just so that we can check in on um, what you're doing and how we can work together on that. Yeah, no, I really look forward to it. I'm very, um, very community oriented, and I'm I, I I I want to reach as many people within the community as possible. So, I'm really happy to be involved. Exciting stuff. Yeah, so, I was gonna say welcome to the neighborhood, but you know, 
<laughs> so, Knock you know, wood. <laughs> welcome, you know, welcome to the Bonafont, and um, you know, hopefully, spring twenty three or bust, or maybe even earlier. So. Hopefully sooner, yes, as soon as we can. But you know, maybe Valentine's Day, and that would be oh, lovely. There you go. That would be lovely. Soft opening. <laughs> that sounds great. Well, yeah. thank you Liz. so much. Yes. Thank you. Liz, this is Alex. I just wanted to just answer the question I couldn't answer earlier. Um, Parks received nine responses uh, to the RFP, and um, you know I don't know what you know one person considers local and 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 not local, um, but I think just you know my guess um, in, in just from the particular neighborhood, um, roughly half of those, so four of those would I think you would consider to be local businesses. I see. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. You got it. <clears throat> All righty. Well, on that note, um, I would like to move the agenda um, and welcome Curtis Zuniga from the Lenape Center. I want to just refresh everybody's uh, recollections. We had a really uh, robust conversation back in November of 2020 and in December around the renaming of Bennett Park. Um, this was a conversation that was started by a neighborhood dad who had issues, uh, understandably so, as to why Bennett Park was, you know, why we continue to have this lovely park named after a man with the kind of history that um, that James Gordon Bennett had. He was an avowed racist. He was a, a Southern sympathizer. He, uh, lots of information in those previous minutes, but um, one of the local dads who had started this conversation is a firefighter and the fire department had recently um, renamed their Bennett Award for Bravery not after Bennett, who was the person who originally endowed it in the middle of the 19th century, um, but after a firefighter, because um, the fire department decided that that was a, a better person after whom to name this, this, this award. So we started a conversation about what might we, do we want to rename uh, Bennett Park? And the answer was overwhelmingly yes. And then what would we rename it or after whom or after what would we rename it? And there were a lot of thoughts, um, a lot of different uh, people who have been overlooked. Many of our parks are named for white men. Um, there are, this is, uh, this is a diverse neighborhood. There was a lot of interest in renaming the park after, um, after women, after uh, various notable people, uh, who are Greek, who are Jewish, who are Latino. Um, but the, the, the leading contender was the recognition that all of this land, not just Bennett Park, but you know all of Manhattan and most of New York um, and the entire country, it's, it's not our land. It's, um, <laughs> we're, li we're, living, we're living on stolen land. Um, and that an appropriate uh, renaming for that park and for many other um, public areas as well uh, might be to um, honor the Lenape. And the question was, how do we do that? And do we have, you know, clearly we need to bring other people into that conversation because things that we think are a good idea may or may not be a good idea. So because of work that um, I was involved with related to the project, um, further up in Inwood on 211th Street, um, where uh, Broadway, not Broadway housing, um, Curtis, remind me of the name, BRC. Where BRC, right. yes, where BRC is building a uh, homeless shelter and um, a building for services for uh, unhoused New Yorkers on land that had been ceremonial, Native American ceremonial pits and um, African-American and enslaved people's burial grounds. 
So long conversations about how best to honor that legacy, um, how best to honor the people who had been in that space. And I had the great good fortune um, and honor to meet Curtis and thought that he would be really add a lot to this conversation. So that by way of background. Um, and I am eager to hear your thoughts and also to entertain people's questions as a continuation of this conversation that we've been having over time. <clears throat> All right, thank you, Liz. And good evening, everyone. My name is Curtis Zuniga. I am an enrolled member of the Delaware Tribe of Indians. We are the modern day descendants of the people known as Lenape, the original or indigenous people of New York, uh, at least New York City, up the Hudson River, up the valley, until you get about to the uh, foothills of the Catskills Mountains, and then uh, principally occupying a corridor between New York City and Philadelphia, this evening, I greet you from the city of Philadelphia, where I've been here on tribal business uh, for the past week. However, uh, our tribe is headquartered in northeastern Oklahoma, where I live and work. I am the cultural director for the Delaware tribe, but I also have a, uh, uh, I'm on the board uh, of a uh, nonprofit arts and culture organization. Uh, based in Manhattan, called Lenape Center. And uh, it's an organization that we began in about 2009, uh, have been operating in a virtual capacity uh, for a number of years. And uh, I will be glad to begin to forward, if there is interest, uh, more information on us, but uh, including our website. Our website and Facebook page would probably be the two main points of contact to learn more about the organization. Again, I want to emphasize we are an arts and culture organization. We also um, try to get involved in a, a, a gra grassroots supportive effort uh, in environmental issues uh, in the New York City area. And uh, so I've been asked by Liz to be a part of this conversation about renaming um, uh, parks or monuments, or I'm, I'm, uh, maybe it's just parks right now. I know there's a separate monuments commission. And uh, uh, I did a little bit of a background on, you know, what this group, advisory group here is trying to do about that. Um, and I commend you on your efforts so far. Um, I bring with you a, a sensitivity uh, and a, uh, it's an innate connection with New York, with New York City. Um, the tip of Manhattan was a place of trade and commerce long before any Europeans arrived. Um, I tell people that don't really know that uh, Manhattan, uh, Manahata, as, as uh, we say in a word in our language, actually mean, Manahata means the place where they make, they find the wood, they gather the wood to make the bows for, our, for hunting, hunting bows. And so, uh, you know, I've been, Coming on and off to New York City, not too much the last two years because of uh, COVID, but uh, I kind of know my way around. Um, I think the first time I came to New York City, I flew into what was called uh, Idlewild Airport on Pan American Airlines. Now I'm really dating <laughs> myself. The year was 1963. So, you know, I I'm have an affinity for the greater New York City area, but all of the Lenape homeland, the original homeland. So to see and hear from you all that uh, in this age of uh, perhaps somewhat more enlightenment uh, and inclusivity and diversity in your conversations and your consideration of identifying and honoring 
uh, a number of people that are decidedly different than might have occurred 100 years ago. Uh, I'm pleased to hear your consideration for recognizing the Lenape, the original people. And I'm sure it brings to question for many that don't know about the Lenape, which is the reason why we're in existence as Lenape Center. It is to combat the erasure of the people that were the original people, but then eventually got pushed out, moved away by force. Uh, first uh, encounter was with the Dutch and the Dusty Dutch East India Trading Company, followed by the Brits, the, the uh, English, I should say. The English uh, then uh, took over New Amsterdam, renamed it New York. Very quickly, let me tell you that they built a wall, palisades around their, their encampment, their fort. And there was a trail that traversed the perimeter of that. They built a wall to keep the Indians out of the very land that they thought they had negotiated, common occupancy, shared occupancy. Instead, the idea was is that the land was supposedly sold and then uh, the Lenape had to leave. And by building a wall to keep them out, the path that traversed the perimeter of the wall around New York was the path that went along the wall and that path grew into a street. And that's why today you have Wall Street the center of trade and commerce in today's modern world. So there is a ironic history um, and perhaps your efforts to um, recognize the original people um, through renaming uh, and honoring someone that you feel is much more appropriate uh, in today's world. I would be glad to um, uh, share more information with you. I'm not prepared tonight to introduce any name at all. Uh, I would like to be part of a continuing conversation, but I have some ideas that uh, the idea is to use a, uh, use a word or two in our traditional language that can be also uh, translated but I would uh, urge or encourage that there be some uh, informational plaques, uh, wall text, something placed somewhere that would be uh, inform informative. Uh, a lot of the reason why people don't know about the Lenape is because we were intentionally erased from the history books or viewed or written as something in the past. It wasn't until the National Museum of the American Indian in Lower Manhattan that came about in the last 20 years. Before that, uh, we Indians, we were in the uh, Museum of Natural History along with the Mastodons and, uh, you know, that kind of thing. So we are alive and well. We are still here. Uh, we're starting to work our way back. We would like to be welcomed back into the homeland. We would like to take our place at the seat of the table of power, uh, much like you all are right now. And we have a lot to offer. We have an amazing history. Uh, we have a history of resilience and we have traditional knowledge that can come back and benefit your community, uh, whether it be cultural, even environmental. So my suggestions for renaming are gonna be along the lines of a more of a uh, general uh, descriptive name of the people that existed uh, uh, on Turtle Island of Manhattan. And uh, that with some uh, education, uh, informative uh, information that can be accessible to people, Maybe put a QR code on, you know, on a, <laughs> sort of a plaque or something. And you go to that and then you can go to our website. You can go to 
uh, the history of the area where you're on. Um, these are ideas I'd like to share with you, but I shan't take a lot of your time this evening uh, with your meeting, but I do appreciate the invitation and I hope that we can continue to uh, have a collaborative uh, discussion. Uh, and if we can offer some uh, ideas that may, um, that may be amenable to your objectives, uh, that we can work together. Uh, I think it's important that we do more than just come up with an idea. Uh, we want to have a, you know, we, we want to have a stake in this thing if we're going to be involved and uh, feel connected um, and make uh, friendships and partnerships. So uh, I'll stop right there and I'll turn it over to Liz to however you want to facilitate the remaining discussion. Well, thank you. Um, I not seeing any hands, I want to jump in and, and ask Jennifer. Um, I, I know that the Parks Department has a really excellent program of signage in each of the parks. And there's a, you know, it's a pretty extensive several hundred word explanation with, you know, some information about the natural history of the area and some information about the person or event um, uh, after whom the, the park, a park is named and um, you know, some connection as to why that person or event is a name is associated with that particular park. So can I assume that if there were a renaming of Bennett or of any other park um, that there would be the ability to have that kind of signage such as we see in Javits and Bennett and you know, some of these other parks um, to Curtis's point. And is there the capacity for QR coding? Mm -hmm. um, so I, there is a historical sign project. Um, parks, it's run by the Parks Department's Arts and Antiquities Division. Um, they, you know, we have a of our historical signs, for, there are over 400 sites that reference Native American uh, peoples and specifically tribal lands of the Lenape, the Canarsie, and the Wekwaskik. Sorry. Wekwaskik. Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Um, the broad I one. Even you have difficulty pronouncing that. What was the, what was the last part, Curtis? I'm not spelling that in minutes unless you tell me how to do this. <laughs> um, and Jonathan, who uh, who's the director of Arts and Antiquities, says th they're always looking for ways to enhance their signs with specific documented in information, site evolution. Um, so they, they'd be happy to work with this committee and the Lenape Center. Okay. That, I mean, because that seems, you know, to Curtis's point, we can we can name anything, anything that we want, but one of the things that I think the Parks Department really gets right, that the Department of Education and uh, Department of Transportation do not get nearly as right, is there's, there's an explanation and there's some narrative and there's a story that tells us why is this thing called what this thing is called, Whereas, you know, you look at all these co-named streets and that's great that it's co-named after somebody, but you don't know who these people are. You don't know why this street is called or co-named whatever it is. And so this is a, really a, a learning opportunity um, that the, the Parks Department has, has jumped on in, in, a, in a great way that's a terrific public service. So I think, I, uh, yeah, I think that's a great way. And I think also more programming because a lot of people maybe don't respond uh, to a sign. They might respond to something that's more interactive, uh, immersive, mm -hmm. or so if there are more ways to do joint, you know, public programs, I think that can leave an indelible, indelible mark on people and it can help uh, connect, you know, um, people to not just the history of long ago, but the Native American current. Um, um. Mm -hmm. 
present. I, I, I would be glad to um, send. I don't know how to do this, Liz, if it's a group email or what, but I mean, I'd be glad to send more information, not only about Lenape Center, you know, the institution, but some of the work that we've been doing. Um, uh, there's also, you know, a great deal of uh, work in land acknowledgement statements with various uh, uh, entities around New York. And I've even done uh, some workshops in that regard with like uh, the New York City Human Rights Commission, um, Columbia University, uh, New York University. So uh, we are becoming more invested. We've got a major exhibit at the Brooklyn Library at the uh, Greenpoint Library. It's going on through the end of this month. So uh, if you get a chance to just go to the Brooklyn Public Library website, and look for the name Lenape Hoking, L-E-N-A-P-E-H-O-K-I-N-G. Lenape Hoking, meaning the land of the Lenape. If you go to the Brooklyn Public Library website and search around for that exhibit, that'll give you an idea of some of the things we're doing in the New York City area now. Um, and and I am pleased uh, or to offer any further credentials to identify who we are. I am an enrolled member of a federally recognized Indian tribe, uh, as is our uh, executive director uh, and our uh, musical director. So we're all, you know, quite invested um, uh, in the area. We have a lot to offer. And to your uh, uh, advisory group here, and if it meets with your approval, then subsequent uh, conversations can uh, lead to the types of uh, suggestions we have in your effort to uh, do any co-naming. Uh, am I able to, uh, uh, Jennifer, am I able to uh, make direct contact with this uh, office dealing with historic signs within the parks? Sure, absolutely. Or if you want, I, I, can, I, I don't think I can throw my email in the chat because I'm a yeah, panelist. Unfortunately, the way the Q&A works, we have a Q&A, but we don't have a chat feature. So I would say the best thing to do is- I'll email you, Liz. Yeah. Curtis, if you have information that you would like me to, sh that you would like to share with the committee, if you, the, probably the easiest thing to do since you already have my email is if you send it to me, I will echo that back to the committee. Similarly, I can connect uh, the two of you, Curtis and Jennifer, so that uh, you can get whatever information on uh, Jonathan from the Arts and Antiquities um, sure. Division. Sure, and, and right. I'd love any information you have on, on programming that we could do. I think that, yes. that would be great. Um, is really accept an accessible way for a lot of people to connect. And uh, so if you're taking notes, you can find us on lenapecenter.com. Uh, L-E-N-A-P-E-C-E-N-T-E-R, lenapecenter.com. Uh, and we also have a, a page on Facebook. But I will uh, forward uh, our email contact information. And so I look forward to uh, conversations at your convenience. Uh, and if you are indeed wanting to achieve this objective, it would be my uh, uh, privilege to uh, join with you and assist you in that effort. Thank you. Uh, I want to recognize uh, my colleague, Steve Simon. He is a member of the board, also works for the Parks Department, and he has his hand raised. Uh, yeah, thank you, Liz. Um, yeah, I, at the Parks Department, I'm the uh, Manhattan Chief of Staff. Um, so I, I have two questions, and uh, I, I think I may need Jennifer's help on the first one. Um, uh, are you, uh, Mr. Zanega, are you aware of the uh, uh, drums along the Hudson Festival that uh, the Parks of Hombud holds every year in, in Hin Inwood Hill Park. And, and Jennifer, do we include uh, the Lenape in that event? You're, you're, you have to unmute. I'll, Steve, I'll jump in there and say, uh, I've not been involved in this uh, uh, and was unaware of it in particular, but that's why I'm trying to be more visible so I can find out more. We work with, um, I guess, some of the Rana Lenape. 
Um, yes. But we'd love a more formal contact. Um, so this it would be great. Yeah, I'd like I'd like to, I'd like to uh, touch base with Curtis on how we can get him more involved with that annual festival. Great, it's coming up, Curtis, in June. So I'd love to talk to you before then. All right. And um, my my second question is, and if I missed this in your presentation earlier, I apologize. Did did the uh, Lenape live um, all over New York City uh, beyond just Manhattan? Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, real quickly. Uh, our original homeland extended from the foothills of the Catskill Mountains up the Hudson Valley all the way down into New York. It does not include Long Island. That's uh, Shinnecock country out there. Um, and then uh, all the way down past Philadelphia, emptying oh. out into the Delaware Bay, all of New Jersey. Uh, however, Lenape is a large name uh, of Algonquin speaking Eastern Woodlands people but there were a number of village sites uh, all throughout there that had its own diversity, but, uh, uh, and many of those names only survived in uh, signage and history books. And the people were forced by colonization to kind of turn into one homogenous group so that they could be forced out. So that's why it's hard to see a lot of people anymore until recently you know, starting to resurface again. So uh, I, again, appreciate this opportunity to have a dialogue with uh, this group uh, and continued dialogue and Liz can kind of help connect the dots between us all so that we can uh, continue on past this phone call this evening. Wonderful, yeah. thank you so much for being so open and willing. Because yeah, like what, uh, Curtis, what I would like to talk to you about is, uh, is, is the, um, you know, there are other opportunities as well, uh, you know, throughout Manhattan. I'm, I'm mainly concerned with, that's my job is Manhattan. Uh, so I'm, I'm curious to know where else within Manhattan uh, we might be able to pinpoint particular places where, uh, uh, where, where the Lenape had a particular imprint. Is that something? I would, I would, I would say all the way from like lower. It's all of it. All all of it. Out from lower Manhattan all the way past Inwood Hills and heading okay. up the river to heading, heading up the Hudson River. Okay, all right. All right, well, that's good to know. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to recognize we've got uh, Julie McCoy has a question. Um, yeah, it says I was muted. Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention and kind of towards Steve's question, the Inwood Canoe Club in past years has hosted in part an event known as the Two Row, where Native American and First Nation uh, people paddle the entire length of the Hudson, essentially from Canada down to here. Um, it's been a couple of years. I mean, obviously COVID has had an impact, um, but I just wanted to mention that is something that our canoe club has participated in uh, in supporting a basically a, a waypoint along the way as they complete their row. Um, and I would want to mention as well, Curtis, uh, I'm originally from Tulsa, so I appreciate you uh, contacting us all the way from the great state of Oklahoma. <laughs> I don't Excellent. think we've ever had Oklahoma so in the house. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, thank you for that. I'm just, uh, I thought I saw another hand up. Okay. Um, uh, if I may, let me just say real quickly. Look, I know that there are hundreds, thousands of indigenous people who reside in the greater New York City area. The Lenape are... I respectfully assert, are the indigenous people of Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And and that distinction is different from indigenous people. I mean, there are Taino people from the Caribbean. There are, there are people that have had to move to, to New York City for decades and have made their home there, but they're from tribes all the way back to the West Coast. So um, I wanted to make that distinction. And so everyone wants to have a voice. And I think that is important to recognize that uh, and afford them that opportunity. My representation is 
is uh, for the Lenape. I fully intend to uh, raise the visibility of our people um, and assert that we are the original indigenous people as the history books will show, but we believe in uh, recognizing and uh, uh, the, the vast uh, diversity of people who are uh, known today as indigenous uh, or native people. Thank you for that. That's a really important clarification. Um, Steve. Yeah, I, I wanted to make one more point. And, and again, I think I need Jennifer's help. Um, uh, I, I think maybe the most recent parkland uh, that we uh, added in Northern Manhattan next to Inwood Hill Park is something that we named Muscoda Marsh. And, and I thought we took the Muscoda name uh, from, uh, to recognize the, uh, the Lenape. Am, am I correct on that? Uh, Jennifer, didn't we choose uh, Muscoda as the name for that, uh, for that new park because of its connection to the Lenape? Oh, I am unmuted, sorry. Yes, that's my understanding because there's the Muscoda School. Um, I believe it means place of the, the uh, reeds or the marsh grasses because it's marsh, I'm looking it up. Um, I know it's habitat. Yeah, I'll have to look it up, Steve. All right. Okay. Well, it was it was not my uh, it was not my goal to uh, it was my it, it was my goal to further this conversation, not conclude it. Um, this is uh, I think it doesn't work to have a neat. Um, we're going to open up this conversation. We're going to talk about it for 20 minutes. And then we're going to, you know, this isn't like a sitcom or a one hour uh, television drama where you have the exposition of the main characters and the conflict and the resolution of whatever is the plot line. And then, you know, cue the credit music and we're done. That's not how this conversation works. So I'm, I'm actually okay leaving it with, uh, leaving it unconcluded. Um, and knowing that we're going to get some more information from Curtis, um, which I will then share with all of y'all. And we can, um, uh, I, I don't like to give a lot of homework um, in the committee, but I would like to encourage people to go on to the, the community board's website and just reread the minutes from the conversation that we had had back in December, where there was um, a lot of conversation about possible naming ideas conceptually and couple that with the information that we're gonna get from Curtis so that over the next several meetings, we can continue this conversation in bits. Um, it took a really long time to uh, steal that land and to <laughs> erase um, an entire history of people so it's going to take more than a few weeks or months to figure out how to begin to kind of grab some of that back and um, teach a little bit about who was here before us so that we can honor that anything i bring to the table it's going to include our role as the indigenous people, our role as stewards of the land and how to take care of the land and bring traditional knowledge into care of the land and the water. Now, those underlying themes may be represented by a symbol, a name, a word, an idea even, but that's where I'm gonna go rather than selecting just one individual who in today's world would be some obscure Indian, you know, that you know, it's not talked about very much. That, that's what I'm going to uh, uh, give you a little <laughs> advance notice uh, about my approach. I love that. Yep. Okay. Well, are there additional questions, burning input? Um, 
seeing no additional hands raised, I am going to move the agenda to the next item and with real gratitude. Um, thank you so much for taking time out of your, I know you're, you're away from home. I, I see you're in a hotel room. So <laughs> I really appreciate your, your taking so much time um, to share, share with us and uh, teach us. All right, it's my privilege. Thank you all. Shall I uh, excuse myself now? Yes, you may. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye now. Bye bye. All right. Um, next item on the agenda is just old business, new business, and um, I there isn't any that I know of. Um, looking and on the up, oh, got a raised hand. Yes, Jennifer. I forgot to announce um, that um, uh, NYC Parks and the Natural Areas Conservancy is looking for um, uh, trail stewards. Um, I can send around the, uh, the flyer and the link for how you can get trained to do that. Um, we're right now our focus is on the four miles of trail in Inwood Hill Park, and we have a lot of local trail stewards and we've got some local scout troops that have adopted segments of trails and upcoming restoration projects um, but we'd love more so if people really want to connect to the land and the forest we've got an opportunity for you I can send that to uh, Liz to to send around to the um, committee and then um, I also wanted to let people know that um, Highbridge Park while most people associate it with the, the pool or the water tower or the bridge and the historical waterfront infrastructure. It, it's 130 acres and 103 of it are actually forest. Um, so I'm excited that uh, again, Parks Department's Natural Resources Group and the Natural Areas Conservancy are starting a program that is targeted to high bridge. Um, and on April 19th, there's a meeting um, where you can connect with the Natural Area Conservancy's um, Hybrid Park um, Hudson River Estuary Planning Project. Um, and during this project, um, Natural Areas Conservancy is going to lead hands on workshops about conservation, forest ecology and care, plant ID, and then nature trail management. So we'd love your help in getting word out about that. Okay. Um, is there like a flyer or do you have a blur? Yeah, I have a flyer and a link, but I can't put it in the chat. That's um, okay. If you can if send you it to send you, send me okay. uh, those two, those two blurbs, flyers, whatever. Okay. And I will, I will forward them to the committee, but I will okay. also forward them. Um, Paola, are you on the call and listening? Have you stepped away? Um, they can just email me as she usually does. Okay. She sees okay. me on everything. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Paula. Yeah. If you could uh, then e blast that stuff out because that sounds super interesting. And just for my own edification, this is um, November, uh, November. Hello. April 19th. That is a, that's a week from Tuesday. That's Tuesday. Is yes. Tuesday. Day, is this during the day or in the evening? I think it's during the evening. Let me pull up the flyer. Okay. So is this a Zoom or is this a hands-on? This, this one, the first one, the intro meeting is a Zoom. Oh, okay. Um, so I've got the flyer open on my screen. Help improve the health of Highbridge Park. It's a year long project that where uh, Natural Areas Conservancy wants to partner with neighbors and community groups. And I've given them a list of different um, mm -hmm. civic groups they can reach out to, but they wanna open it uh, to the, the greater public. Um, the kickoff webinar is April 19th at 6 p.m. Okay. And the link is naturalareasnyc.org slash get hyphen outside. Okay. That just sounds good. All righty. Well, with that, um, oh, Etta, you haven't said anything all meeting. What you got? 
I just have an announcement. Um, it'll be quick because I know we're ready to get, you know, to go about our the rest of our evening. So this is on behalf of the Housing and Human Services Committee. Uh, we are um, letting all the other committees know that um, we are leading the way in creating a resource fair for this summer in the community. Um, even though it's led by the Housing and Human Services Committee, we are always looking for volunteers because it's going to be it's going to take a lot of a lot of folks in addition to our staff, the CB12 staff. So if anybody's interested. Uh, you can shoot me an email and I'll connect you with the chair of our Housing and Human Services Committee, Marielle, as they move along and get more details as we get closer. That sounds fantastic. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I look forward to that. All right. Uh, seeing no other hands, I will take a, a motion. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second it. <laughs> Thanks, Ada. Okay. Sally, she beats to it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. It cool. is 813. We are adjourned. Thank you all hey. so much. Everybody have a happy whatever it is you celebrate. If uh, you're celebrating Ramadan, if you are celebrating Easter, if you are celebrating Pesach, um, or if you're just enjoying the weather as it gets nicer. Hello, Danny, good to see you. Um, you know, and happy Tuesday. And I'll see y'all at the general meeting. Actually, I won't see you at the general meeting. I'm gonna be in Portugal. I'll see nice. you. Nice. Nice. Travel All to right. catch up on. Yes. Good night. Have fun.